Hi, this is Pete Olivier and I work in the flow room at Thompson Equipment Company. Today I'm going to show you how to configure an 8712C or D secondary, which you may or may not have sitting on the shelf. We're going to configure it on the assumption that you're going to match it to a tube that you already have in the field. Uh, the process is fairly involved, but not super difficult, anything like that. The first thing we have to do is set up the tube size which there's a tube button there's a button on the front panel for tube size and all we have to do is press that the display will show the current setting which right now is four inches we're going to change this to a six inch tube and we have to press the shift key to get over there and that will advance it to the next available size which is six in order to make it take that accept that change we have to hit enter and enter again and now the tube size has been set to six inches Next, we're going to enter the flow rate that's appropriate for the tube. In our lab, we are using 2,700 gallons per minute on a 6-inch tube. I'm going to make sure that that's what's set in there. And it's set for currently 272 gallons per minute. We need to change that. We press the shift key and advance the shift key until we get to the fourth digit from the right and hit the increment button to make it become 2. Then we press the shift key to advance to the next digit and hit the increment key to go up to 7. 5, 6, 7. Advance the shift key to the 7 and, advance, and press the increment key to bring that up to 0. 8, 9, decimal, dash, 0. And finally, we get to the last digit and go through the same procedure. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Excuse me, decimal dash zero. And then enter, enter. Keep in mind that you do not have a decrement key. If you go past the number you're looking for, you have to cycle all the way through again to get back to the digit that you need. Now we've entered the upper range value of 2,700 gallons per minute into the secondary. The next step is to put in a calibration number. And there is a button for it, tube cal number. And this is the default number that was used for factory settings. This, if you were taking this off the shelf, you might very well find this number in your secondary. We're going to put in a more realistic number on the assumption that that's how we calibrated your tube. Press the shift key to advance to the first digit and a normal cal number might look something like this 0 8 9 period dash 0 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 6 5 Zero, one, five, zero, zero again, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, dash, zero, nine, eight, nine, three. I seem to have made a mistake. I seem to have dropped a digit. There should be a 7 between the 9 and 3 of the second 8 digits. We have to cycle all the way through, around, advance the cursor until it's where we need the 7 to be. 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 1, 2. And now we have the number that I intended to put in there. This is a common occurrence that with a 16-digit number, dropping a digit is very easy to do. This is how you fix it. Now that we've got the calibration number in there, we have to force the system to accept it. We press Enter, and then Enter again, and now the new calibration number is in the secondary. Now we're going to show you how to perform the auto zero on this secondary. We start by going to the AUX button, and we press AUX and verify that we're in 
30 hertz on an 8712C or 37 hertz on an 8712D. Keep pressing AUX until we get to auto zero. This, depending on which model you have, may take more than more presses or fewer presses. There's auto zero and press enter. It wants to verify that you have your loop in manual. Press enter again. Verify that you have no flow and that you have a full tube and press enter. Once you've verified all of these things, press enter one more time and it'll report auto zero in progress. Auto zero can take 25 to 30 seconds to, uh, to complete and it should report completion to you and whether or not it was successful. It says auto zero complete, push any key to continue. This is where it would report success or failure. Since we got no error message, we have a successful auto zero. Now, if you are going to be operating in a slurry type process, you want to leave the system in the high drive rate, either 30 hertz or 37 hertz, depending on which unit you have. If you're working on a low viscosity system, such as water, then you'd want to convert back to the low, to the, uh, low drive rate. We go back into AUX, and press AUX until we get to coil pulse mode, and then we press either increment or shift to convert. Once we have the appropriate drive rate set on the screen, either 6 hertz for an 8712C or 5 hertz for an 8712D, and we press enter twice, and we have now changed the coil pulse mode. Now we've seen how to configure an 8712C or D for the upper range value, the tube size, and the calibration factor, and how to perform the auto zero on this unit, and how to convert the drive rate to the appropriate setting for your process. If you, we hope this information has been of use to you, and if you have any further questions concerning calibration issues or operating procedures, please feel free to give us a call at 1-800-528-8997.